Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to go over a few questions that I've been getting uh, repeatedly regarding printing with PETG. PETG is a fantastic material. It's more heat resistant than PLA by a long shot and almost on par with ABS. The beauty of PETG is that it is easy to print with. It doesn't warp like uh, ABS and nylons but is more robust to temperature than PLA. PLA being super clean to print with and uh, easy to print with. The problem with PLA is it has very little heat resistance. You take a PLA part out in the sun or in your car, and this part will just start to deform right away. You can't leave it near an open window. It's just not robust at all if it's going to be exposed to any kind of temperature. Now, with PETG, there are a couple things that you need to be aware of. The build plate that you print PETG on can't just be the glass build plate that comes with your Ender 3 or build plate that comes with your standard Ender 3. Another issue is if you're using glass, PETG does not like to stick to glass. The only way to be successful printing PETG on glass is to load up the glass with some type of a adhesion promoter like stick glue or specialty adhesion promoters for print surfaces, masking tape, hairspray. These are all things that you have to put on your bed to get PETG to stick to it. Now, what I have here on this Ender 3 V2 is a sheet of Garolite G10. This material is awesome. I highly recommend that you guys, if you haven't already experienced using Garolite as a build surface, this stuff is just next level. Everything sticks to it. When the parts cool, the parts mostly self-release. Those that don't self-release can be easily released by just slightly pulling on them. If you have a very large part, this material is about a sixteenth of an inch in thickness. You can just remove it from the build plate, give it a slight flex, and the parts will just pop right off. Anyway, I can't recommend this build surface enough. Ever since I put these on my printers, I've had zero problems with adhesion and parts removal. I've had a lot of you ask me to create some based on my DIY Garolite video for the Ender 3 V2. They're at Amazon. I'll link them in the description for those of you that are interested. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel and like this video, consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up, turn on your notification bell, and leave some comments. I love the comments. I enjoy answering your questions and helping you guys navigate this wonderful hobby that is 3D printing. All right, so let's get to the second topic. The second thing is that's very important is determining what the proper temperature is for the PETG filament material that you purchased. So what I have here is a empty spool of Overture PETG. And if you look closely, Overture puts it on the uh, spool itself. So here they got a temperature range, 230 to 250 degrees Celsius. And they give you a bed temperature of 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. Now what I found with the Garolite G10 is the 80 degrees Celsius works great for PETG and nylon. Uh, with PLA, you're going to have to turn down the temperature to maybe 50. So let's jump on to Cura and create a couple of calibration parts. Once you got Cura loaded up, what you're going to do next is head over to where it says File, Open File, and then we're going to load a part. So I have this uh, PETG temp tower that I made. And... Cura has some calibration parts that you can add by going over to the marketplace up here on the top right corner and downloading an app that it will install into Cura. But the calibration parts that are included in that don't match up to the pre-installed scripts that Cura comes with. And that's why I decided to make my own. So this is based off of their models. I just scaled them properly so that the scripts align with the model. Uh, what typically happens when you load these scripts is there's certain changes that happen during certain layers and the included plugin models did not coincide with that script. So 
use these. I'll make them available in the description for you guys. So this particular one is a PETG temp tower. So once you have it open, uh, switch over to where we're in the preview mode. So you got prepare up here at the top and then you got preview. And then scroll down your little layers uh, tab. And we're going to come up to the first layer here just to verify. So over here it says that at layer 52, that's when our first PETG test bridge ends. And what we're going to do next is head over here to where it says extension. Move down to post processing over to modify G code. And what we're going to look for is temp fan tower. Click on that and it's going to load a script. Now, if you notice, this script says that uh, the change layer happens at 52. So if you notice here, the new model that I created, it aligns with the script. It's at 52. We don't have to do anything with the change layer offset. That is the height of the platform on the bottom, which also coincides with this script. So nothing to do there. The only change that has to be made is with the temperature. So come up here with the temperature change this to 240. I found that printing any PETG uh, above 240 serves really no purpose. The, the material gets extremely stringy and uh, it starts to, to uh, elephant foot. Uh, anyway, the, the prints are not good. It's distorted. So anything above 240 really is not necessary for PETG. If you're working with a different material like nylon or polycarbonate, uh, those, those materials are going to require those higher temperatures. Also, there is a thermal limit to using the uh, Bowden tube setup, and that limit is at 240. So keeping this model at 240 is safer for you guys that aren't running an all-metal hot end. So once that's done, just close this script. You can see that the script is active because down here at the bottom, there's this little box with a red number one. The red number one tells you you have one script loaded. And then next thing is we're just going to save this to a disk. So save this to your SD card, let's run over to the printer, load it up, and print it. So you see down here at the bottom, you got uh, real heavy, heavy stringing. And there's a couple of things there that are causing that heavy stringing. The, the higher temperature and the fact that the E-steps are... Uh, were, were set for uh, 220 degrees. So down here you're, you're over extruding. Uh, so it's a combination of over extrusion and the high temperature that's causing this. And then as you can see as the temperature drops the stringing uh, becomes less and less. So I currently print at 220 which is uh, right here. Uh, but you could set the temperature anywhere between 215 and 220 for this particular filament and you'll get uh, very good, very good prints. So now the second thing we're going to have to do is to create a retract tower. So let's jump back onto Cura and we'll do that real quick. Print the retraction tower to figure out which retraction is best. All right, guys, back in Cura, we're going to disable this script here. And then we're going to get rid of this temperature tower. Next thing you want to do is come over here to File, Open File. And I already created another part here for the retract tower. Again, same problem as the temperature tower. It just doesn't align with the script. Uh, I'll include all these files in the description, but uh, just load it up. And the model's correct, but I'm just going to show you guys how you can verify this. What you can do is go over here to the uh, right, where the slider is on the far right-hand side. And you're going to pull that down to where it just completes the first layer. Now, if you guys are in preview mode, you'll have to, in prepare mode, you'll have to go over to preview to be able to see this. But just pull that slider down and make sure that that first thing is... Uh, First bridge is complete and you can see there it is right there and it's showing us a layer of 38 so at 38 it's going to transition to the next setting that we 
enter into the script. So let's go to extensions, post processing, modify G code, and you're going to look for retract tower. Click on it. And by default, it's going to be set to speed. We're going to need to change this to distance. So just click the little drop down, change it to distance. The first thing that we're going to change is we're going to have a start value of one. So just uh, put a one in there. And we want to incrementally increase by one. So again, another one. And then the other two settings you can leave alone, the uh, 38 and the 4, because uh, this is already built into our model. Just close it. Verify that it's running here at the bottom. Yes. And save to disk. Now, I had to go in here and change my speed because I printed something. Uh, your speed should normally be set at somewhere like 50 millimeters per second. And then go ahead and save it to your SD card. And let's load it up on the printer and print. I printed two retract towers because I wanted to confirm something. So the first retract tower that I printed had uh, was set to from uh, two to seven. And I was pretty surprised that with a retraction of two, I got the least amount of uh, artifacts. Uh, I was not expecting this. I currently have my retraction set at six. As you can see, the six looks really lousy. Um, so two seem to be the, the one that I need to go by. So I need to set my retraction at two. And I confirmed this by printing this a second time. So I, I created a, another version that had a, a started with a one to see if it was better below two. And this is what I found. So it's the same result. Retraction of one is not nearly enough. Retraction of two is excellent, very good. And then it starts to deteriorate from there. So three, four, five, six. And you can see on this one oh, what seven looked like. So it doesn't, doesn't improve. So in my case, with this particular filament, a retraction of two is, seems to be the sweet spot. So let's put the two together. We got a temperature of... 215 is the best one, and a retraction of 2. So lastly, the thing that we need to determine is our retraction speed. So again, we're going to print another retraction tower. However, this time we're going to use the speed setting. So let's jump back over to Cura, load up the speed uh, retract tower and figure out which is the best speed. We're going to get rid of our current model. So just select it, let's press delete, and then we're going to load our next model. So this one's going to be a speed tower. And uh, we're going to need to change the script, so just click on the script. We're going to now change it to speed. And then our starting value is going to be 10. And we're going to increase in increments of 5. And that's it. Uh, close it. Verify our script is still running. We're layer change 38. And now this model has the appropriate markings on it, so 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. Uh, so one more thing before we print it. Let's go into our Cura settings and let's review everything that we, that we know so far. So under Material, click on that. According to our temperature tower, the cleanest print that we got was at 215 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and change my print temperature to 215. Next thing is going to be uh, your travel. So click on travel. 
And based again on our previous test with our distance retract tower, we got a retraction distance of two. So let's go ahead and change that to two. And then lastly, we're gonna confirm our speed settings using the speed retract tower. Send it to our SD card and let's print it. All right, guys, so let's take a look at it here. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe we can, oh, yeah, there you kind of sort of see it. Okay. So there you can see the... Uh, So here we can see the little fibers here, All right? So a retraction of 10 gives us a uh, very good performance, but if you keep your retraction at 10, your prints are gonna take forever to complete. Uh, the next best one is 30. So I'm currently running 25, but as you can see, 25 does leave room for improvement. So 20, again, just like the 10, it's just kind of slow. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my retraction speed to 30 millimeters a second, which is this one right here. And, uh, and then we'll run a quick test for stringing to see how we did. Next, we're going to delete the current model that we have loaded. Click on it and just press the delete key. And we need to make sure that we unload the... G code that we got running. So let's uh, delete the retract tower by just clicking this little X over here. Close this. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to load up our test uh, model. Let's go over to our test model. And this is just going to be a simple string test. Once it loads, we're going to click on our printer settings. We're going to come down again to where it says travel, and we're going to change our speed, our retraction speed, to 30 millimeters a second. And that's based off of the previous test we just did. Now that it's sliced, we're going to save it to disk and do a quick test print with our new settings. There is some stringing here, and this is with a retraction of 2 and a speed of 30. And just for kicks, I'm going to put it back to my uh, original profile, which was traction of 6 and speed of 25, and see if there is a uh, improvement or if it gets worse. Here's the So this was my default profile. When I started with, so this was with my retraction set at 6 and my retraction speed set at 25. And uh, as you can see, there's there's problems with this uh, with the, with this setting. So this this goes to show the importance of rechecking all these settings every time you change filament brands. 
and it even could happen between batches of filament. So if you start to notice that something doesn't look right in some of your prints, it's a good idea to run all these calibration shapes and do all these, these tests again to make sure that you get the best print. So now let's go back to the to the one that was set according to the calibration shapes that we printed and compare the two. So you can see this is the one with the calibration shapes and while there are a couple little wisps there, the shape is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the shape. There's no artifacts on it compared to the one that I had with my stock settings. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave some comments. I love the comments. I do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I can. Till next time, take care.